Real quick before we start the video, just want to let you guys know that we are raffling off this Mint 1982 CBX 1000. Yes, that CBX, the inline six cylinder monster from Honda. The gentleman's weapon. This motorcycle is in phenomenal shape. 12,000 original miles. It is ready to rock and roll. It's about as perfect as you'd ever want a bike to be that you're going to ride. And 100% of all proceeds from this raffle go directly to charity. They go directly to benefit Forgotten Angels. Forgotten Angels helps young men and women who have aged out of the foster care system, who have been abused, beaten down, destroyed, never given a chance in life, and it helps make them productive members of society. The foster care system is a direct pipeline to homelessness, to tent cities, to drug addiction, and to all sorts of stuff that is way too bad to say in the first minute of YouTube. But I promise the problem is horrible, it's bad, but Forgotten Angels is doing everything they can with your help to help solve the problem. And we may never solve the problem in our lifetime, but we're damn sure going to try. And somebody's winning this motorcycle. Click that link down below, but do it in another browser because let's get on with the video. <laughs> What's up, Radio Shade Tree Surgeon here with the one, the only, the long, tall, and deadly, godzelly, blissful Elliot. And uh, the snakeskin boots are coming out. That can only mean one thing. It's time for another Forgotten Angels campout. Let's go, baby. All right, here at the campout with the guest of honor, the star of the show, my man right here. Bearded Biker. Oh, the Bearded Biker. Come here, you <laughs> bastard. Now, one of my favorite parts of the campout is meeting all the people from the Discord and premiere chats and the comments and going like, dude, I've known you and been talking to you in the comments for like 10 years, man. Not as many people out this time, but it's beautiful. I love it. We yeah. didn't advertise it as much. I'm actually picking up my camera and filming. Yeah. We got all our domesticated girls over here taking care of business. I had to teach them how to make something hot, if you believe that. You can laugh. Laugh at my joke. Laugh, please. <laughs> there we go. I'm never surprised at what's in a man's garage, all right? You're allowed to have your little secrets in there. Go on, get her. Hey, chill. I don't know what you're up to. Knock it off. The marvelous, mysterious Maria Mew and her monster trucks, Grave Digger and Bigfoot, coming in clutch, baby. Yeah, the brave. everybody says yeah. that. Everybody says that. It's a, good, it's a compliment. Yeah, she it's was a compliment, she dude. Was I cried at the end of that one, dude. I always cry at the end of movies, though, dude. I'm a sucker. Every movie, no matter what it is. I'm 40 years old. I still weep. The USPS has made an appearance. <laughs> Working together with Dr. Girlfriend, I feel betrayed. Everybody's eating phallic foods. I hand out the I love pickles, it, dude. hand out the corn. It's <laughs> in the mouth. <laughs> Listen, this is the weekend that God doesn't see, okay? I got eyes, I see things. My eyes were laser beams. There'd be a hole burn in the middle of your pants, baby. <laughs> <laughs> You have confidence because of me? Yes. That's the opposite of what you should be feeling. I know, right? That's why I told you. It's absolutely unearned confidence. So, my man it's going happen. all the way to Denver on a shovel head that he won. He's been riding around all weekend. I give you literally a 50-50 shot of making it. Oh, man. It's, it's going to Which make is more it. than most people will give it's, you. It's going to make it by hook or crook. But <laughs> the question is... Yeah, is it going to make it there under its own power? Or a fox truck? My favorite thing when somebody wins a bike, we give away a lot of bikes. It seems like it's like, dang, all the winners are at the camp out. I'm like, yeah, we give away a bike like every two weeks. Right. Not making you not feel special. No, we love you. But I love it when somebody comes down and goes, I'm going to get on this 40 plus year old shovel head. I'm going to ride it home. That's awesome, dude. As per usual, I filmed almost nothing at the camp out. Not weird for me. I was having way too good of a time. But we do have long, tall, possible Ellie. Long, tall, and deadly blissful Ellie. Almost forgot a title. <laughs> it's still here, and she's hopping on the dirt stir. And uh, we actually got a cool surprise for her today. Well, that was a very short-lived ride. I didn't even get my helmet on for that one. <laughs> Ellie went to go take the sports old dirty bastard around the block, and it lived up to its namesake. Yeah. <laughs> 
Anyway, besides the sports shirt trying to pull Ellie out into traffic and stalling on her. Three times, three different cars. I understand your frustration with the motorcycle. I wasn't there, but what you described to me, I understand what's happening with the bike now. Now, I could just explain it to you. I could just fix it. But in order to alleviate your frustration with the motorcycle, I think our best option is for you to take it apart, you to fix it, you to see how the clutch works so you know what was happening. Essentially, to everyone at home, Ellie had the clutch all the way in, but the bike was still trying to pull her out, which can be a very like panicking thing because you're like, that's the off button. You know, you're being pulled out into traffic. You have a clutch all the way in. It's like, oh God, what now? First off, kill switch immediately. That's that that would be your other off button. So just as a first off, like if you have the clutch all the way in, the bike is still Why creeping you into something you don't want it to do. doing something you don't want it to do. Kill switch then you're not going anywhere. But let's see why the clutch was doing what it was doing. Suspicion why it was doing what it was doing. But I want you to see it. Yeah, yeah her Himalayan's got some custom parts on it. Custom no, it bent is. parts, single custom mirror. Never had a left mirror because the... Hey, you know what, when, you, when, you're, tall. when you're six foot five, it's hard to see through the mirrors. Yeah, I'm literally too tall for my side mirrors. Just the one. Let's first off get it tall enough for Ellie. Yeah, you better not cut my head off. Well, we actually need to cut more inches. <laughs> There we go, all right, I think we're safe now. So let's go over the main parts of the clutch. We have the clutch lever, okay. which we're familiar with, and this is the clutch cable. A bike with a hydraulic clutch, it wouldn't be a clutch cable, it would be a hydraulic line, and you'd have a master cylinder up here, <laughs> slave cylinder down here. When you pull the clutch in, you're releasing the clutch plates from against each other. Touching. Right, so they're not touching. But I want you to know what that looks like. They go apart like such a tiny amount. Mm -hmm. So there's two things that could have happened to cause what you were experiencing. One, there's not enough fluid in here, which is what I think the problem is. The transmission also felt sluggish. The other thing is, is an improperly adjusted clutch. You have adjustments on how far they go apart because when this is out, you want them all the way together. Now, if you're improperly adjusted and you're all the way out and they're not all the way together, mm -hmm. well, now your clutch is going to slip, give it power, and it's going to spin in there and maybe only move you a little bit. But then if you have it too tight, when you pull it in, you're still going to go forward because you're yeah. not all the way apart. So it has to be in a sweet spot and every bike has a different adjustment yeah. for what that is. I feel like the Himalayan is that first one where it's like just it doesn't get going very fast when I release the clutch. And I don't know if that's a Himalayan thing or if any could be adjusted. Uh, it, could, be it could be a single cylinder 400 cc thing. That's, fair. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> this, you see where your clutch cable goes into here? So, so we're gonna go ahead and pull that off. So these four? Yeah, probably. Yes. <laughs> okay, the back, yeah. yeah right. I've never used one of these before. It's okay. Now with Torx, you have to make sure your ends are very straight. There you go, with pressure, or else you can strip it out. There you go. Now you wanna loosen them all up before you take any of them off. I know that putting together Ikea furniture and taking it back apart again there when I go. fuck it up. Still can't believe I stripped my hand. Hey, it's gonna happen. <laughs> it's confusing. One of them was like the wrong direction. I should have watched the video. They, there was a fun Don't worry. Video. Live and learn. I promise you it won't be the last thing you strip on a bike. It happens. As they say, when uh, righty tighty turns into righty loosey, you know you're in trouble. It's a little stuck, not weird. So what we'll do is take a pick. If I remember correctly, since this leaks, I freaking put a shit ton of silicone on there. You yeah, did. that's why it's so stuck. <laughs> Watch what happens when I pull the clutch lever. Yeah, it just like releases off of it. Yeah, it's pulling them apart. We are definitely a little low on fluid. You just stick your finger in there to check that. I mean, that's how you do it. Gross. <laughs> so we're a little low, so let's add some fluid, but we'll also do an adjustment on it. Wait, where are you? There you are. We're just gonna go ahead and change it. We're already down here. We've got enough fluid to change it. Let's go ahead and do that. Oh, there you go. Damn, she's strong. So that's the thing about having an older Sportster is they do require maintenance. Like your Himalayan requires maintenance, but you can kind of just get on it and ride for the most part. Yes. But these you do so have far. to do regular maintenance. And since I own it, that doesn't always get done. And then you just put a girl on the back. Well, yeah. And send her down the driveway. Yeah, I think it's a character building experience, honestly. Yeah, I was supposed to say, I want like a ton of fluids on we'll my We'll just fingers, let that please. hang out for a minute. So the Harley Davidson Sportster takes exactly one quart or about an inch below this. So you can stick that right there. Nah, don't worry, you ain't gonna, you know, it'll be fine. Go ahead and feed it that. Can you tell me when to stop? I cannot see in there. No, it takes, that's one oh, quart. the whole thing. Yeah, it takes the whole thing. Got it. Now, this is a unit construction, which means the engine and the transmission are all in one piece, set up for the primary, but primary lubricant and the transmission lubricant are separate from the engine lubricant. So this does both. That's why when I felt the transmission and it felt like it, would, it was shifting a little weird, it just felt low on fluid to me. On most motorcycles with a cable clutch, there's two adjustments. 
Okay. Um, I say most, I assume all, but I'm not sure. Uh, there's an adjustment down here, at least for the Sportster. And then we're going to leave that one alone because we really only have to adjust it minorly, which means we'll use the one on the cable. On this Harley anyway, it's on the cable. On most bikes, it's up by the clutch lever, which is a better design. It's like a little wheel you spin there to adjust mm -hmm. it. Because you can literally just do it with your hands when you're sitting on the road. This one you need tools for. On a normal clutch lever, that is perfect. That's exactly about what you want for free play. This isn't a normal clutch lever. It's an easy pull RSC a stunt clutch because this has a heavy duty clutch in it because it's got a 1250cc engine, somewhere around 100 horsepower. The stock Sportster clutch isn't good enough. Had to upgrade the clutch. These have stiff clutches anyway. If this had a normal clutch handle on it, pulling it in just feels like pulling on a block of wood. But that means they get adjusted differently because they have a longer throw. So with these RSCs, what I found, and maybe you have a different experience with them, is I found they want to be adjusted all the way in. So we'll loosen these up. I'll let you do that. So put both of them on there. Okay, now pull them towards each other without hitting your, your fingers, okay? I'm blocking the view that people can't see. Now that we have the jam nut loose, this is how we adjust the clutch. Yeah, so pull it back just to where it starts to engage. Now you can twirl that back at this one right here. That's how you adjust it. Now try spinning it. Can you feel it moving up there? Yes. You can spin it. It doesn't matter. We'll, we're going to adjust it. So if you get it out of adjustment, I just want you to feel how it moves. See how you have even more? Now that's not what we want to go the other way. We want to tighten it up. We don't want to tighten it up too much. Use those again. And what you're doing is you're jamming that nut down on there so, you don't, so it doesn't move. All right, let's pop this cover back on. We'll take it for a test ride. Take two. Back in the saddle. I love it. How you feeling? Hell yeah, that's what I like to hear. Feeling good, looking good, baby. The longest girl ever. Maybe not ever, but she's pretty long. Long, tall, and deadly Godzelly back there, back on the sports street. It always feels a little bit weird to hop on a bike after it does something funny. I get it. I'm no different. Like, I get it. I'm not, like, immune to that. And I don't know everything about bikes. In fact, there's a lot of people out there who say I probably shouldn't turn wrenches on bikes at all. And I can't completely disagree with them. Because I'll mildly disagree with them. But I feel like... Like knowing how to turn a wrench, knowing how the inside of the motor works, knowing how the clutch works and, and the wheels work and bearings and gear shifters and all that stuff, knowing how it works when something funny does happen, when something weird happens and you're just going like, oh my God, I've just gotten hit with this lightning bolt realization that I am on a you know five to 900 pound two wheeled vehicle. I'm just sitting on top of a tank of combustible liquid on top of a bomb, an engine that's fired off of tiny explosions and I'm trying to ride around on this and it's doing something I don't know what it's doing it's kind of a it's kind of like this uh, moment of clarity thing I get it it'll make you feel a little weird but when you know how everything works down there when it's not a mystery it really helps I know that you're not used to that <laughs> out on our Royal Enfield Himalayan, the rear tire gave out, which is kind of funny because if you all remember, Ellie was my knight in shining six inch heels when she came and rescued me after a double blowout on the very same bike that she's on back there right now. You know, it's a fun day when she talks me into hot dogs instead of the other way around. You know, some people might say Ellie's really the true hot dog lover over here. Just a plain dog with ketchup, baby. When you can get a, a kimchi oh, dog. It's like a shame. It looks so <laughs> naked. Delicious. Don't be ashamed of your naked dog. I'm about it's a good bite still. I feel like people are gonna pay for this. I'm a, sorry, boys. Premium content there, but <laughs> me, you get for free. Answer down in the comments below, man. Is it the elotes, pickled red onions, Mexican street dog? Is it the kimchi dog? Or are you just a plain ketchup bun raw dog in it, baby? I mean, I'm dressing mine up. Ellie's, Ellie's eating hot dogs like she's in the 70s over here. Back when motorcycles were dangerous and sex was safe. Now motorcycles have ABS and now everyone else has got everything else. Now that we're full of tube meat, let's ride some motorcycles. Now the camp out is the weekend that God doesn't see. That's why I can get away with all these things I do at that point, like not eating right, among other things. And I was supposed to spend this week getting back into my groove, getting back into eating right. And then long, tall, and deadly Bliss Welly says, how about some hot dogs? And I just, dude, I just fall apart. Just watch three dudes get out of a convertible Mustang GT, and I feel like there's a joke in there. Something about a refrigerator and meat, but I'm not sure. Three dudes, one Mustang, the world isn't ready.
Well, this is the motorcycle I should be making a video about right now, and not just because it is 1982 CBX, six-cylinder, 1000. One of the most desirable Hondas ever made. I shouldn't just be making it for that reason, although that's good enough. I should be making it because that's the next Forgotten Angels giveaway bike. And the reason I'm not making a video on this bike right now is not because there's nothing wrong with it. It's mainly my fault, and that's because uh, I tried to start it at the camp out for a really extended period of time with the gas off. There was many witnesses, and it's not my proudest moment, but that thing's gotta hang out on the battery tender for a minute. So let's go ahead and spend time with another Honda. This 1980 CX500, the Silver Wing. You know, it might not be as rare and desirable, strange, weird, and amazing as a CBX, but we're still gonna make it into a really cool bike. And it is a really cool bike, but we can make it better. If you guys have been paying attention, you know that we've decided to take my old 1980 CX500, sorry, GL500. We decided to throw it back together in homage to the man himself, Prince, and give it away for the release of the Brapstar Cannabis line, Raspberry Buffet, with a portion of those proceeds going to benefit Forgotten Angels. I got till July to get this thing ready, so uh, knowing me, I should get started now. And one of the biggest parts of this is gonna be paint, so it's time to tear this sucker apart. I hate it when Honda does this. They're not the only ones, but I always run into it with Honda. They make these things that hold the Speedo cable. This is riveted on the other side. So the only way to remove the front fender is to remove the Speedo cable from down here. It just seems kind of like a dumb design. Why wouldn't you make this removable so you could let this all hang apart while getting the fender off? But nobody asked me. I guess it's not that hard to pull off. It's just one screw. It just seems kind of stupid. So this is a trick I learned from my good buddy Dylan, and he showed me this when we were first building the Yamaha XS650, the Palmetto Bug. When we pulled it all apart, he said, go grab you a bunch of paper bags like you put your lunch in when you were eight years old, and a magic marker, and just start labeling everything. Don't leave anything to chance. Don't make anything funny. Just label it exactly what it is. I know this is just four bolts and two brackets, but it, don't leave things to chance. Just don't like throw everything that's from the front end in one bag. This really helped me out when we were building the XS, man. It's just like, if I had to put two bolts in something and write something down on it, it's just a paper bag. Label it from where it goes. No generalizations. Let's get back to it. Whoops. Whoops again. I hope I can find that. This is already going swimmingly. Windshield hardware, minus one piece as yet rediscovered. Definitely don't want to lose these guys. I could probably replace them from the hardware store, but if I don't have to, I don't want to. Now how does this motherfucker come out? I feel like I should remember. And you guessed it. Headlight hardware with uh, only a minor misspelling. Don't blame me, blame society, okay? I graduated early in the 10th grade. I've never taken off the inside fairing on one of these, but there's these grommets all over the place, and I'm wondering if they hide. They don't, actually. All right, let's try that one again. Maybe the whole thing comes off as one piece? Mm, time for some unknown territory. I've never pulled off one of these fairings before, so I'm just gonna start unscrewing stuff and see what happens. To be totally honest with you, that's how I figure out most things. Ask uh, any number of my ex-girlfriends. I wish I could unscrew a couple of them. Oh, this looks like it's gonna come off pretty easy. All right, we'll take it. All right, really wasn't that difficult. Looks like there's all one main hire wiring harness. One plug for the whole fairing. Gosh, they should have taught this to the Honda Magna. Dang, that was really it? That's amazing. I hate that this rear fender is color matched because that means it's got to come off. It's got to come off. It's coming off. Well, what in the fuck is going on here? These things are a pain in the butt. How the hell does this over-engineered bullshit come out? <sighs> Oh, I 
I see. God damn it. All right. Well, let's uh, let's do it your way, Honda. Jeez, oh, he was so much harder than it needed to be. So dumb. I hate that it's paint matched. In order to truly understand the rear fender and how it is removed from the bike and how it holds a rear seat on, I have to introduce you to a Japanese concept called a chindogu. Chindogu is less of a philosophy and more of an art style. It was originally created by Kenji Kawakami. Chindogu is the art of creating a product whose usefulness is precluded by its absurdity. Needlessly complicated, solving a problem that barely needed to be answered at all. There are 10 tenants of Chindogu, and I'm pretty sure that the rear seat and rear fender and how it's held onto the bike of the 1982 GL500 hits about eight of them. Only on a motorcycle built in the cocaine boardrooms of the 1980s could this possibly exist. I started out annoyed, but by the end of it, I was actually impressed at how absurd, overly complex, and completely useless they could make every single part on the rear end of this motorcycle. That was uh, an exceedingly huge pain in the ass. Well, I will say this motorcycle has been good and well denuded. But taking it apart is only half the battle. In fact, it's uh, less than half the battle. It's like a quarter of the battle, maybe even only an eighth or a sixteenth of the battle. Gotta take all these parts to mow colors and have have them doing up right in print style. We're going purple with white lace and the rest of the bike, that's up to me. But that's a mission for another day. Okay, where were we? That's right, 1982 Honda CBX 1000. Right where I'd like to be. There's a lot of amazing bikes out there, a lot of legendary bikes, a lot of fast bikes, but the CBX 1000, this one is really special. <laughs> and yeah, that's what makes it special. This six cylinder engine, it's still got the stock exhaust on it, but it still sounds like a maniac when you get it up high in the rev range. In fact, putting exhaust on this thing might be the only thing I would change about this motorcycle, but that's not really up to me to decide. That's gonna be up to whoever wins this motorcycle. And I've had a really hard time giving away a lot of motorcycles that we've been away for Forgotten Angels. This is gonna be one of the hardest, just this legendary, status the unicorn honda four-year production run this 82 the final year and they only made this super sport with the fairing and the bags they only made that for two years original paint everything on this motorcycle's original has got 12,500 miles now i'm probably gonna put a few on it i imagine whoever gets it will get it with over 13,000 miles but you're just gonna have to deal with it baby because while i have this which is not for much longer we're only running the raffle for a few weeks you better be sure i I'm gonna ride it. When I first grabbed this bike, I did a joke video going like, oh, I don't know what it is, pretending like I got it for nothing. I was gonna chop it up. Like most of you guys saw right through it. A couple of people, I got them. And uh, you know, I had a bunch of people who didn't watch far enough to for me to say I was actually joking about it. That's all right. Jay Tree Surgeon is a vastly misunderstood creature. 90% of the time by my own design, but I digress. There was a bunch of people who were fooled by what I was doing who said, don't you know that that bike's worth over $10,000? Well, try more like like seventeen or eighteen thousand dollars. Ten thousand. If you if you find a CBX Super Sport like this, nineteen eighty two final year in this condition with twelve thousand miles on it for ten thousand dollars, baby, buy two of them because right now these things are going from seventeen to twenty thousand dollars. They ain't making any more of them and they ain't getting any cheaper. This one you can get for twenty five bucks. This thing is just such a gentleman's bike. An iron fist in a velvet glove. A pistol with gold scroll work on it. It just is, it really is. It's a gentleman's weapon. This motorcycle feels like the kind of motorcycle James Bond would ride on vacation, okay? Maybe not on a mission, because it's too nice. But when he's on vacation going on a gentleman's tour of the countryside, sampling all the fine champagnes of France, it's gonna be on a CBX 1000. This thing is just such a joy to ride. A relic from another time and place, back when Honda really liked to take some chances. Ancient, weary, and powerful, 
weapon from a bygone era. Everything about this just screams like Duesenberg straight eight rushes red barchetta. This is the thing after they've outlawed gasoline engines that you find under a sheet in your grandfather's barn and evade the mine police on. This motorcycle is amazing. Well, I'll tell you, one of my favorite things about this motorcycle is that it's ready to be ridden. It is in insanely amazing condition, but it's not so perfect that you wouldn't want to ride it. And as Joe the Mountain Jedi says, motorcycles, they were designed to be ridden. <laughs> yeah! That's what this thing likes to do. Old Ira Majiri, I'm probably saying his name wrong. I'm sorry, bud, but are we good enough for me to just call you Akira? I think it was Akira. I might be getting that wrong too. Anyway, he built this thing to bounce off the red line, baby. He was in charge of Honda's F1 program. And uh, when you ride the bikes that he designed, it shows. Like I said, a gentleman's weapon. Huge thanks to all you guys to support Forgotten Angels. We give away some pretty cool motorcycles. The last one was a Triumph Rocket 3, and we had to follow it up with something pretty cool, but we really followed it up with a banger this time, a CBX 1000. I don't know if anybody's ever given one of these things away or not. I'm sure in the history of ever, somebody's given one away, but it can't be a lot of people. I really hope whoever wins this, like, you better start a whole YouTube channel around touring on this motorcycle. And as I always say, Every motorcycle comes with a one-way ticket to Tampa, Florida, so you can spend the weekend having fun, having drinks, going fishing with me, Shaylisi, the rest of Shade Tree Army, Cami Bay, Blissful Ellie if she happens to be down here, David, of course, and we're going to send you back home. Come on vacation, leave on probation, baby. We're going to send you back home on this CBX 1000. So as I said, this thing was made for the gentleman's tour, and I want to see it do its job. In fact, feel free to take that name. The Gentleman's Tour. It'd be a great name for whoever's YouTube channel that you start when you win the CBX 1000. And as much fun as I'm having on this CBX, let's not forget why we're raffling it off. We're raffling it off with 100% thanks to Matt from Amp AEV. 100%. It's going directly to Forgotten Angels to help them fight the system of abuse in the foster care system. It's going to help them expand their mission beyond the borders of Florida. We started on this last year and we ain't stopping this year, baby. We ain't stopping for nothing. Forgotten Angels is coming to a neighborhood near you. We are on our way to starting in other states already, and the mission is all 50 states and Canada. When you're doing something like fighting homelessness at its source, when you're doing something like preventing the pipeline to tent cities, which is the foster care system, it's the pipeline to drug abuse, to gang violence, to people living on the streets, to people falling through the cracks. When you're fighting a fight like that, if you live somewhere where you have a homeless, a huge homeless population, if you live somewhere like San Francisco or Portland, Oregon, and you see this stuff, you know how insurmountable it feels. But I'm telling you this, we all work together. Together, we can change the world. And it doesn't even take that many people because right now, none of the raffles I've ever done for Forgotten Angels have ever gone outside of you guys right now, outside of Shade Tree Army, the Brapstar crew, all you guys right here who are watching the video, we've never broken outside of that. Now, I wish we would, because that'd be great for Forgotten Angels, but we never have. This is just us and what we're able to do. Most of these raffles that we do, unless they're the really big ones that go for a long time, they end up being like a one in 400, one in 500 chance. We are doing this with just literally maybe a pool of a couple thousand people. And this is just what a couple thousand people can do. Tell somebody about this raffle. I know it sucks because if you're buying a ticket, you're hurting your own chances by telling somebody about it. But I promise you, you know, you might get the bike. It's amazing. But the cause and what we're doing it for is much more amazing than that. Thanks to everybody who helps out, who shares the videos, who talks about Forgotten Angels and the raffles we do. Thank you to everybody who entered. Thank you to everybody who showed up to the camp out, the weirdo camp out, a family reunion. And I uh, yeah, I'll see y'all in October. Until October, until next time, keep it weird, y'all. Crashing through the sky comes a fearful cry. Shade tree. Army. Shade tree. Army. Armies of the night, evil taking flight. Shade tree.
the world opposed the deadliest of foes. Shade tree, Army. shade tree, Army. who will risk it all to end the evil call of shade tree? Army. Shade tree, Army. they never give up, they never say die, walking tall with banners high. Shade Tree Army, a ruthless gang of scum, villains, freaks, and bikers determined to rule the world.